Hi everyone, it's Sarah here from the Belly Dance Business Academy and I am with Tiffany from the Belly Dance Bundle. Hi! <laughs> You're going to have to excuse us, we find this really difficult. Today we have swapped, it's usually Tiffany speaking, <laughs> interviewing me and today I'm going to interview her but um, we have to do a bit too much editing because we laugh too much doing this. <laughs> Try and get our laughter out of the way. No, we're going to be very serious. This is going to be a very serious business meeting we're having here. Yep, we're ready to go. <laughs> so I'm, as, I'm sorry. No, you're not even there yet. <laughs> so as you probably know, this week marks the launch of the Belly Dance Bundle 2020. I want to say, is it year three, year four? Four. Four! Excellent! Because the last three years have been so successful and we love it so much we keep making you do it again and it again. It's do best. it again, Tiffany, do it again. There's your cat spot. Yep, I told you he would make an appearance. It wouldn't take very long. <laughs> <laughs> so because we're all excited about the launch this week, um, I thought I'd get together with Tiffany and we'd have a chat this way round and you can find out more about her as a person and as a businesswoman because as well as running all these different parts it's all very successful and so we all need to learn from successful business people so um i'm going to start off with a really easy one for you ha 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 um tell us about your belly dance origin story what got you into belly dance and what made you stay all right um so I am half Brazilian, but I was raised in the States, so I'm oh. pretty divorced from the culture. Um, but when I was growing up, so this, like in the 90s, right, my dad had pirated the Brazilian, like the biggest Brazilian station called, it's called Global. Um, it's like where they air all the soap operas and, the, mm. you know, talk shows and stuff. And like, think about pirating in the 90s. He literally had like a chip like set in this huge box. We had a like really big satellite dish out on the back of the house. He was like literally pirating satellite signals <laughs> to get us this channel for free. Cause it was, you know, it was hard to get in the States at that time. Like now it's like so easy to watch Globo no matter where you are. Yes. Um, but they had, um, there was a soap opera called Ukloni that ran when I was a kid. And the main character was half uh, Moroccan and half Brazilian. And during the show, at times, she would do basically like belly dance performances. Um, I, I know now that that was wildly inaccurate, <laughs> right? Like with new eyes, but as a like 10-year-old, 11-year-old, you know, however old I was when it ran, um, I was just entranced. I was like, I'm going to do that. Like, I'm going to figure out how to do that. Um, but nobody taught kids classes where I was. And I think in the 90s, they weren't as common um, it was one of those things like, oh, well, we can't teach anyone until they're 18. So my mom got me some VHS tapes, which is hilarious because the bundle is like all digital now, right? Like who VHS is like a thing so far removed from, from our experience now. But um, I did a couple of those and then I didn't really follow up. But then years later, I saw um, an ad in a community ed flyer for a belly dance class. And I was like, yes. Oh, I've, like I remembered that wow. feeling of like watching the soap opera when I was a kid and I like went and did it and I just fell in love with the movement. I love how it makes me feel. I really feel like I would, I was never allowed to take dance as a kid. <laughs> right. So I, I like being able to move and express myself in that way. And just like, it was one of the first like physical things I had pursued. I was never did sports. I was, I always was like a couch potato I just read books all the time. I just read. I still do. I just read all the time. And so it was, it was an opportunity to, to move and do something. And, and that felt really nice. And I loved the music. I loved the quality of the movements. And then I just kind of spiraled out of control. Like it, like it does. And now I'm here combining all of my interests into belly dance and creating the bundle and doing stuff. But it turns out, I learned later. I always thought this was such a unique story, right? Ukloni, like this thing. That's the most syndicated soap opera of all time. Oh. That soap opera was redubbed into Spanish, Italian, French, like everything, and was aired all over the world. Right. So as you start to talk to more dancers, you'll actually find lots of people who remember Jaji, the, the woman, um, from this. And they, like, they'll remember that being a spark that brought them in. Um, to belly dance and it was so funny the first time I met someone else who even knew what Ukloni was I was like what but they knew it as a Spanish soap opera 
And I was like, it's not a Spanish soap opera. What are you talking about? It was amazing. It was like this really like re revelatory moment for me in my dance journey. So you're the, like, there's a group of you sort of scattered around the world that are like yeah. the grandbabies of the soap opera dancer. <gasps> yeah. Wow. But she wasn't a dancer. Like, she just learned how to dance for the show, I think. I think I read an article later because it was very popular at the time. Brazilian soap operas aren't like American soap operas. They end. Right. <laughs> um, you know, they only last for like six to eight months. Um, you know, but it was so popular when it was running. Um, and I think, she, I think she learned how to dance for the show and like at one point she was dancing with like a sword on her head which is such an american yeah. right like thing that and so it's like it's so funny to look back on it now because like now i can see i was like oh that's not accurate like the, in the ways that she was doing it how her family was reacting to it i was like this is not but this is like, one of the things that like so when we see someone on america's got tongue and i don't want to knock anyone because i've never seen america's got yeah tongue. So I don't want to knock people for being bad dancers or that. But, you know, we get that, we tend to get that social network eye roll of like, oh, why did they go on it? Why did they represent and all that kind of thing? I don't think it matters. I think if the kids see someone in a soap opera, in a TV show, on a talent mm -hmm. show, you know, someone's, someone's mum's best friend dancing around the living room, that's where that spark comes in little kids. We don't have to be super skilled <laughs> i mean it, it sounds great when people are good <laughs> yeah i think it i think it goes both ways with it right like there's an element of respect and and knowledge that needs to go with the dance but at the same time like i can't tell you how many dancers are belly dancers now because of shakira and i remember when shakira first started doing belly dance the belly dance world was like excuse me you know so like there's i don't know there's a there's a weird line there but as someone who comes came into it with one of those sparks. And I know several of the contributors, actually, I think two of them on the podcast told me that they were Shakira babies Aww. to the dance as well. You know, like you have to, you have to also be happy that that mm -hmm. at least got them into it so that they could get to the point where they have the knowledge and the culture and the history behind it mm -hmm. as well. So. Because we only know about belly dance because we know about belly dance. I mean, if, right. if, you, if you polled a hundred people and said, what is this dance this person is doing? They'd go, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, in order to see it in that community newsletter, you need to know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, this week sees the launch of your Belly Dance Bundle. Can you explain? I know I'm so excited. I'm so excited. It's so good this year. It's such a coming together event, which is why we want to include more people. Yeah. So, can you explain to everyone what the bundle is and how and why they should check it out? Uh, well, you should check it out because it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> but for real, um, the Belly Dance Bundle is basically a compilation of online dance products from dancers all over the world. So this year we have 46 dancers across 14 countries. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. It's, it's madness. It's fantastic. So basically what I do is I reach out to dancers who have online content. And this year, that's a way more dancers than it's ever been. Right. right? Um, and so... We, we bring them all together, we package them up, and I try to curate a complete practice with this. So, you know, there's so many times you get to the dance floor and you're like, what should I be doing? And, you know, maybe you take this class or that class, you're like doom scrolling Facebook, looking, hoping the algorithm brings you the next class that you want to take or that you should be taking. And, you know, you're missing out on this, this teacher's having a sale or that teacher's having a sale. Is that teacher do they teach in my style? Do I like that teacher? Right. You get a lot of these, like, there are so many opportunities now to learn online that it's hard to pick and choose which ones to do, especially if you haven't studied with that teacher before, or you haven't dove in, like you haven't taken the dive into that subject. Yes. So with the bundle, we, I try to kind of curate this complete practice. So you can jump into the bundle and you're getting a whole range of teaching styles or getting a whole range of content um, types so that you can really experiment with what you're doing in your practice. And that way you kind of get this base knowledge of like, okay, I like pre-recorded classes. I like live classes. I prefer hybrid classes. I actually really hate dancing on the internet. I'd rather take lectures. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can kind of dial in on all of that and dial in on the teaching styles and dial in on what you want to be studying without having to spend the like two thousand dollars 
$2,000 that you would have to spend to take all of those classes and figure that out. Like you can pay this one low price for the bundle because it's like 88% off this year. Uh -huh. um, you can come in, spend a really low price. You get a whole complete practice. You get to study and experiment with a lot of dancers. You get to study, you know, and experiment in a bunch of different styles. And it's just a really, I think it's a really great way to stay motivated and get into your practice instead of just kind of always hopping around on the internet, hoping to find the next thing, whatever that may be. Yeah. I mean, so, so you said 46 teachers. Yeah. And you have to be able to find your new favorite teacher out of 46 teachers. Yeah, for sure. And I, every year I get stories from people who, oh, I, I never heard of this dancer, you know, and I, I love the way they teach and they just go on to be super fans of that particular dancer and study with them more people who have gotten into coaching programs um, with these te with these teachers that they had never heard of before, which I really love to see because I think as a student, right, and all of us are eternal students, but mm -hmm. as a student, we always kind of need mentors, and it's it's so expensive to find them. Like you can watch somebody dance, like watch a video of them dancing and be like, this is my dream. Like I want to dance more like this. I want this person to mentor me. And then you start like maybe pursuing that and you're like, oh, I don't like the way she teaches. You know, and so being like having to experiment a lot to find that. And before, right, when not everybody was online, you had to go to workshop weekends all over the country to find that dancer who maybe, who maybe would mentor you online. Right. Right. And now like you can study online with people and start to figure out that path for yourself. Yeah. Um, and with the bundle, my goal is to make that path a little easier, a lot cheaper for you to kind of dive in and, and, and get, get into your practice, get into finding those mentorships within the dance, if you want them. And if you don't want the mentorships and you just want to take the classes, like <laughs> also totally fine. You do you, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to support you. <laughs> so this year you split it between dance and lectures. Can you give us a taste of what we're going to find in those two sections? And can we buy everything all at once anyway? Yes. So the best deal is going to be the complete bundle, which has the dance and the lecture package. Gotcha. Um, but I split it up because it is 46 contributors and some people need to save money. 2020 sucks. Um, right. So, you know, if you want to save 50 bucks and you don't mind giving up one half or the other, then you're absolutely welcome to buy just the dance classes or just the lecture classes. Um, and as for what you can find in them, I, you, You'll be best served going to the website to check it out. Um, it's you can follow Sarah's links into um, into that. But there's there's 26 classes in the dance bundle bundle and 20 classes in the lecture bundle. And I mean we have like Mercedes Nieto, Ebony Qualls, <clears throat> the Belly Dance Business Academy has a whole package in there. Um, we're having Aubrey Hills coming in to do a lecture for us. We've got Shrook. We've got oh my goodness, I couldn't. I couldn't even, we'd be here all day if I was just listing my favorite classes. And if you've listened to my podcast, every episode, I'm like, I'm so excited for you to trip into it, but I really am. Uh -huh. Like well, really. The thing is, I mean, I really, I, I respect your curating of the products. And that's what I think I found in the bundle right from the first year was how many times do you sit back and go, oh, I wish somebody would choose for me. I mean, I used to do it in classes. People would bring in, you know, that printout sheet from mm -hmm. going to a workshop event and say, should I do in, at nine o'clock on Sunday, should I do this one or this one? And sometimes as a teacher, I felt like it didn't really matter what I said, as long as I told them they'd love it. Some so, people just need that. Some people just need that. And, so, and there's nothing wrong with it. No. So like, you have already done that for us. You have gone through all the content of Belly Dance Online. <laughs> I mean, not all of it. I try. I try. And this year, I mean, like you should have seen me curating, like doing this, the first bit of research for this bundle. Cause usually I have like 20 dancers to choose from. And my list got back to me this year and was like, here are the 120 dancers we're studying with online this year. And I was like, excuse me, <laughs> what has happened? Well, this is amazing. Thank you for doing that task for the rest of us. So we don't have to. <laughs> So you kind of answered my next question, but I'm going to give it to you anyway, because I yeah. like that. So why is, do you think the bundle is so much more important in 2020 for us? Oh man. Look, I said it before. I'm going to say it again. Uh, 2020 sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks a lot. I don't like, it doesn't matter who you are. 2020 has been awful and it's been way worse for some people than others for sure. 
And like, I think we just need some joy. Uh-huh. I think we just need some joy. I think we just need, I, I actually, um, if you listen to the podcast that came out to, today when we're recording is the one with Ebony. I think at the beginning I was like, um, there's nothing to look forward to in 2020. Everything, like the, the sense of time moving towards you, like closer to an event is almost always now accompanied with a sense of like existential dread mm-hmm. that this thing is coming. And like, <clears throat> like finally, there is something coming that you can look forward to. Like you can just look forward to the bundle and you can just look forward to the classes and it's yeah. going to be fun and we're going <laughs> to, we're going to dance and like, no matter what is in store for 2020, like we're just gonna have a good time. And I think in the past, like there wasn't this need for something happy to come down the road, you know? Oh, and, maybe we had other happy things in our lives. Right, like we had other things going on. And now I think people just, they really wanna get back into their bodies. They wanna get back into dancing, get back into that. Like, cause for so many of us, dancing is self-care. Mm-hmm. It's a form of self-care. and. I don't know about everybody else, but I know I put a lot of that self-care on the back burner this year when things went, mm-hmm. went totally out of control, right? So being able to get back to that and, and to do it in a way that's like not going to light your pocketbook on fire is helpful, I think. And so I think especially for 2020, it's good. And with everybody like jumping online now, like I said, I've always, I've always positioned the bundle as something that you could experiment with to learn what you like in the online space. And before that kind of resonated because sometimes people studied online, but like now everybody's studying online. Half of you don't have a choice, right? It's online or nothing if you want to study with someone else and not just practice on your own. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more important than ever to know what you like so that you can jump into it and and pursue it in a way that's actually going to benefit your practice. Because like, if you don't like pre-recorded classes, you can buy all the pre-recorded classes you want. It's not going to do you any good because you're not going to take them. Yeah. You know, if you need that live, if you need the, the deadline of a live class to like show up and do it, then, you know, Mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's totally fine. There's no wrong answer, but you don't want to like experiment with all of these things to figure that out. And uh, uh, our, (laughs) our happiness is so very precious right now. Yes. That you don't want to be looking forward to something and then be disappointed in it. Mm -hmm. So you want to be setting yourself up with things that bring you joy that you know are going to bring you joy. I'm going to give you a shout out now on a really big habit you helped me change last year. So you are all about the practice. I am. About habit forming and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And last year, I can't remember whose podcast it was because I listened to them all. Yeah, you tell me and maybe I can remember. But um, we're talking about cross-training and how easy it is if you can find somewhere in your life to do some Mm cross-training. And having done that podcast, I decided I was going to walk every day. And I want to say, I didn't realize until sort of this week that I was listening to the podcast while going for my walk, that it's been a year and I have walked, I want to say 90%. I've skipped a few days, like when I was sick and that kind of thing. But basically my life now is get up and go for a walk. Come That's back amazing. And have breakfast. Because I was thinking, I don't have time to cross train. I don't have time. And there was really motivating about, yes, you do. You definitely do have time. It doesn't take that long. And that I'm worth it. I'm worth going. You to- are. You're I- totally worth it. And my knees are better and my ankles are better. I've lost some weight, but it wasn't about losing weight. It was about, right, that's, yeah. Losing weight's a terrible motivator, yeah. I think, for a I, lot of people. And I think that's one of the reasons I never did any cross training was because mm-hmm. I, was like, I don't want to lose any weight. I like my curves. Yeah. So, it's like, for me, it's, it has to be about the result and not the result. Like I'm going to be skinnier or I'm going to look a certain way, but like, I'm going to be stronger. Mm-hmm. right? My knees are going to support me better. My ankles aren't going to hurt as much, right? Those are the kinds of motivations that really get, get people going. Yep. Whereas like, like the way you look and like all the, these more, I'm not saying you're superficial for caring because we live in a society where you're forced to care, but these, these deeper meanings to it, these deeper motivations and ideas that are so much more powerful when you're looking at it from a, like a, self-care like I am enough I need to take care of my ankles I need to take care of my knees right Mm -hmm. like I just need to move more 
like I said, like when I first got into belly dance, right? It was the first time I actually did any kind of movement for real. And it just felt so nice. Yes. All of us, made for moving. Right. And all of us get into the dance and we love that feeling. We come back because we like the way it feels in our bodies, but we forget that part of it as we get into like the technique and the cult like we start diving in and then we kind of forget about that joy that we had in our practice when we started like uh, I remember when I first started dancing I used to practice all the time and I would just dance around my room like a like a whirlwind yes. I was so happy about doing it and like I don't do that so much anymore so I mean, it was last year during the bundle as well it was because I was sitting at this desk so much oh I bet I finally was just like I just need to get up and dance and I started doing that again like for fun mm-hmm. and now it's like I get stressed out I'm just like put on music turn that shit up go <laughs> I'm just go dance over there I dance like crazy my dog's always thinking <laughs> nuts <laughs> Oh, well, so anyway, thank you very much for that gift you gave me that you perhaps didn't know. But I didn't. That's amazing. I'm so <laughs> thankful that you that you took it and did something with it. I think that's. I do great. find I think you know all these extra bits that you throw in. So you do the podcast that we're in the middle of our 21 day challenge, or at least I'm in the middle of the 21 day challenge. I don't know where everybody else is. I'm the a 21 day challenge planning sheet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm at day 10 right now, yes. which I know That's is totally fine. Yeah. And I've, I've had this conversation with a few other people who've gone, Oh, but I haven't started it yet. It's like, so I'm still getting, cause my, my challenge was day three. I'm still getting yep. at least one person a day who's made it, it day three. I don't And know. like the way the rules are set up, you only have to do five days to be eligible to win a prize. Really? So so I, <laughs> you can still like how many, what is it? One, two, three, four, five tomorrow. Start tomorrow. If you want to do one a day and you'll still be eligible for it. Oh my goodness. Really? That's amazing. And you can stack them too. Like if you want to do four in one day, like Mm -hmm. I have plenty of people doing that. They're like combining them into one practice, which is absolutely wonderful. It's like these little modules that they can put together. I don't know how many people you have doing the 21 day Instagram challenge right now, but I had hundreds yeah hundreds of people doing my challenge yeah <laughs> it took me the whole weekend because I like to comment on everybody yeah say thank you for doing it yeah it took me the entire weekend thanks for that <laughs> I have my assistant is literally like that's their whole job Lovely. is monitoring the challenge <laughs> I do I do my carrot and stick because I'm good with carrot and stick once mm. I have done my practice I'm allowed to sit on Instagram mm. and everybody else's because nice. <laughs> it makes me so happy <laughs> So much fun. It's such a great, um, I love doing all these things outside of the bundle. Right. And so like, we're talking to business people here, so I'm going to talk about the business yeah. side of why I decided to do this. So, um, we talk a lot in our dance community about making our dance really authentic, you know, like bring your own style, be authentic. Don't, you know, copy other people's styles. Don't try to be fake on, on stage. Like people can tell, I think it's the same with marketing. Mm-hmm. You cannot show up to market something and be, skeezy about it you can't be smarmy like it has to be authentic right just as like our dance is authentic our marketing has to be authentic and to me what that means is that no matter how somebody interacts with my brand that they get value out of it right they take something away and so with the bundle obviously if you buy the bundle you get a lot of value Mm -hmm. right there's a great i mean 46 dancers that's a lot of value it's a lot of classes that you can take but maybe this isn't the right time for somebody to do that and maybe you know it just doesn't it doesn't fit with their practice goals right now that's totally fine right I don't have to sell to everybody but I want that dancer to still get something out of the interaction with me so are they listening to a podcast and starting a new walking habit Mm -hmm. right are they participating in the 21 days of belly dance and not only working on their practice and getting that value out of it by having this constant kind of stream of of value coming at them. But they're also, right, getting into the spheres of influence of my contributors. Right. So even if they don't buy the bundle, I'm still promoting my contributors to all of these people. So then, right, no matter who you are in this situation, whether it's a dancer who's going to buy the bundle, a dancer who's not going to buy the bundle, me or my contributors at every turn everybody's winning. Uh-huh. 
And to me, like that's authentic marketing. Right. That's how you run a really good launch. Um, and that's why I put so much work into the front end of the sale right. because it, you know, we talk so much about, um, in the business world about like, no, like trust. Mm -hmm. Right. So all of this builds that and it builds it not only for myself, but for my contributors inside or outside the bundle, all of these dancers who are participating are growing to trust and know and like not only myself, but the contributors who are putting in the podcast, who are doing the 21 days of belly dance, right. Who are bringing them resources yes. that we put out. There's just like literally everybody wins. And to me, like that's authentic marketing. And that's why I work so hard to do so many things around the launch of this bundle. You know, you made me feel up. This is what always happens. You make me so emotional because you're so passionate, but you're so right. I mean, like you were saying about people trying to find their mentor, mm -hmm. I know it's not really the basic plan. The basic plan is present the bundle, help them find their mentor through the bundle. But because mm -hmm. you're giving people the opportunity to meet people through the 21 day Instagram challenge and through the podcast, there are people who are going to find their new mentor, their new inspiration without actually having purchased the bundle. They're mm -hmm. going to bypass your products, <laughs> but get the end result that you wanted. Yeah. And maybe that turns them into long-term purchases of the bundle. Maybe that turns them into yeah. belly, belly, better belly dancers. Maybe that just turns them into happier people. <laughs> yeah. And like, you can't, not everyone's going to buy everything that you do, period. It's not going to happen. Like everybody's just at such different points in their lives. So maybe they don't buy the bundle this year, but they have a good experience with me. So maybe they come back next year. Yeah. Or maybe I run a different project in between and I talk to the people who didn't buy the bundle and I'm like, okay, well, why didn't you guys buy the bundle? What do you need? Right. What is, what is different? What do you need? Oh, okay. Let me make that thing. Uh -huh. And right. As you build trust with your brand, and, and you, you know, build this community, you become more able to branch out and do other things, right. right? So like, if you felt like, if you feel like you're kind of stuck in the dance world, like in this little box, yes, right. That's how you get out of it is you start talking to the people who aren't buying from you, but are part of your community. What, what are they looking for that you don't have? And then what can you do to kind of branch out of your box within the community you've already got? Mm -hmm. so that you can grow and grow and grow outside of the base that you've established. This is why I like talking to you. You get me so well. <laughs> so I, I love business. I love, <laughs> I love it so much. You've done it again. You have answered my next question before I've asked it, which is really good. Okay. But I'm going to psychic. You. you are. Yeah. It's almost like I knew how this conversation would go. <laughs> You, we do this enough, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my next question is, uh, you have a really amazing level of returning customers. And I know from the business world, that's what people, you know, it's, it's great to get a customer, but then you want to keep a customer. So how do you keep people coming back year after year? <laughs> that's good. It's a good question. Um, so I really ascribe to, I can't remember who said it. So someone's going to have to Google. And oh, you're going to make me do remember. homework. I'm going to make you do homework. Someone <laughs> there's there. I read something once in the business world about how you only need a hundred people okay. to be super fans. If a hundred people come and buy everything you do, you're oh. set. And I remember when I ran the first bundle, I was so nervous. I was like, is this going to land? What is this going to be? This is like, and I thought, can I sell a hundred of these? Right. And like with the price point, you know, cause I didn't have an audience. I didn't have anything, but I knew that with the price point and with the contributors I had on board, a hundred people should be pretty like that should work. I don't know why, but like, I remember being an anxious mess until I had this thought that like tied into that. And I was like, okay, I can sell a hundred of them. And then I was fine. I don't know why, <laughs> but it like, it's like totally reduced my anxiety. But I, I think that I try to meet people where they're at, right. you know, um, I don't, I don't try to give people too much for, for where they are. And I, I encourage people all the time to, you know, you were, you're enough. I say it all the time. Like you're enough. We have to come at it from a positive place. Like we can't beat ourselves up. We can't shame ourselves into dancing. And I think that 
coming from this place of like a, an abundance mentality within dance and meeting people where they're at right. it just really speaks to my audience like the people who are going to to drive with me and i also like if you don't drive with me like if if you think my positivity is just like super annoying and you don't want to hear me say you are enough one more in time like that's okay you can just not hang out with me and i'm not afraid of that mm -hmm. you know like if people don't don't like me like that's okay um, so I'm not trying to sell it everybody. Mm -hmm. And so I think by being authentic and being myself and meeting people where they're at, I tend, I, I attract the people who are interested in what I'm doing and then they stick around because the product is really good, right? right? Like the bundle is great. And I'm, I'm available if people have trouble this year, especially, um, there's actually going to be a guarantee in the bundle that if you ever feel overwhelmed or lost, you can message me and I will tell you what to do next. <laughs> Like we can literally have a conversation about what you're working on in your dance and I will point you towards what's next for you within the bundle. No. Nice. Yeah. So just being able to connect and help like on that level with uh -huh. people, I think brings, brings people back. Right. Year after year. And like not everybody comes back every year, um, but that's fine. Again, right? Like people are just in different places. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, it's very often it's not about you, it's about them, kind of. That's right. You have to center your students. I think that in the dance world, especially, this is a shift we're going through right now mm -hmm. um, on a big scale, but it's not, we're, so we're like an ego-driven niche on the internet, right? We have, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But we create like cults of personality around our dance styles, around our dance forms, right? People they love you because of the way you dance. Uh -huh. And then they figure out what kind of person you are. And then they love you or dislike you based on that, mm -hmm. right? But your dance usually comes first. So what we've done in the past is, you know, people get famous for their dancing. They get taken to workshops. They, people go and find them, right? They build this cult of personality around them, but it's about them, mm -hmm. right? And now that everybody has switched to being online, that kind of worked for some people who were famous enough, but some people are struggling who like weren't at that like level of fame, right? In the dance world. And we've been trained to make it about us. It's about making it about us and our style as dancers, because that's how the dance world has worked for so long, but that doesn't work on the internet. Right. <laughs> it doesn't work at all. And it, like, honestly, I would argue it didn't work in person either, but the way that we were set up mm -hmm. functioned. Right. I wouldn't say it worked, it functioned. And so now what I think you're starting to see is the shift where people are taking what they know and their style. And then how do I use this in service of my audience? How do I use this in service of the dancers who want to learn from me? And you're starting to see a big shift in how classes are taught right. online and what people are teaching. Nice. And like I, that centering your customer base is something you hear a lot about like in the business world mm -hmm. outside of, of belly dance. Right. And so that's what I brought in with me when I was like, I'm going to take all this business knowledge and marketing stuff that I know from outside of the dance world, I'm going to marry it into dance, do this bundle. But I was always about centering my customers, whoever was going to buy the bundle. They were the reason I was doing things. So what serves them, right? Like just putting together this challenge, help them. Yes let's do it, you know, and then how, what were th things people were struggling with in the challenge last year, how do we make that better this year? So this year we've been doing a lot of stories around perfectionism and, you know, making it really clear what people do and don't have to do to be part of the challenge and, right. you know, negative self-talk. Like our first day was about mindfulness and negative self-talk because that's something people struggle with. Yes. So listening to the people who are talking to me and then how do I better serve my audience with that knowledge? And you're seeing, you're going to, you're seeing it now as a shift online, but you're going to see it more and more, I think, as online becomes more and more normalized over the next several years. Interesting. I had noticed, and I hadn't really noticed that I'd noticed, with the Instagram challenge, people have been a lot less perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I think the teachers setting the challenges as well as the people going through with the challenges. Because mm -hmm. in previous years, there's been some combinations and I've been, okay, I can exactly, exactly, this hand there, this, this foot there, the weight mm -hmm. shift. Whereas this year, it's been a lot more like, and if you don't want to do it like that, don't do it like that, do it like yeah. that. And I think that's a, been an interesting 
shift that I, I had sort of noticed, but I hadn't connected. Yeah, like yeah. just changed, you know, I spoke to people about it. And there were still people who struggle with perfectionism this year. I know at least one dancer has dropped the challenge because they couldn't handle the anxiety that the perfectionism was giving to them. Yeah. And like, they're still doing it, but they're not posting anymore, which mm -hmm. is fine, right? Again, if that's how you want to participate in the challenge, absolutely go for it but I've changed a lot of the language around what I'm saying in the, in the captions and the descriptions, right? I'm talking to people more on like Instagram stories and stuff about it because it is, it is a struggle that people have. And so, right, responding to what you're hearing from your audience, right? Interview your students. Yes. Talk to them about what they want, what they need, why they didn't buy. Find people who you know were involved in all your marketing mm -hmm. why they, and see why. Mm -hmm. and then see what you can do about it. And sometimes that has to do with price and there's not much you can do about that. If you're priced fairly, you know, maybe you find more extras that you can add on or something, but keep the price the same. Mm -hmm. Like there's ways to navigate around it, but you, you have to start with talking to people and centering their experiences in your business planning and strategy. Really interesting. Thank you. Okay. My next question. Um, so the the kind of moving parts of your business well I, I love looking be, i love looking behind people's businesses it's like yeah but what do you do what do you do all day so you have the 21 day instagram challenge you're yeah. doing competitions yeah you've got the um podcast you've yeah. got the website you're doing yeah. promotion you're doing yeah. team management you're doing all the admin behind yeah. all this i run out of fingers you'll notice i work really doing well. a lot <laughs> so, so what are your favorite parts of your job and what are your least favorite parts of the job? Uh, web design is my least favorite part. Okay. That's, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> I have a web developer who is amazing. Think all that is good in the universe that I have found a good web guy. And if anybody needs a good web guy, you let me know. I will hook you up. Andrew is amazing. Um, so he takes a lot of stress off on that side of things. Um, which is great. And I always suggest to people hire out the things you hate. Yes. Right. So I like the first two years, I think it was the first two years I did. I built the website, the website that you see, I built from, I've got a theme. I read all the documentation. I found all the pictures. I built it all. I hate, I hate that crap, but I did it because I had to, cause I didn't have any money. Um, and then you know, I finally was able to hire someone to come in and, and, and grow it and, and help me set up the techie stuff in there, which was really great. Um, the things I love, I love commenting on people's posts on Instagram for the challenge, um, but I just can't keep up. There are too many people. So I try um, at least twice a day, I like hop on and, and comment on people's posts. Um, that's my favorite because it's community. Mm -hmm it's the community. And I also really, really love the networking aspect. So the way, because it's a bundle, right. And I have 46 contributors. Um, I spoke to every single contributor for like at least an hour, um, before. And, and to me for like two or three. Yeah. You know, I just, there's some people like, I just, I just super <laughs> click with, and like, we just end up having like whole discussions. I, one of my contributors and I, uh, were just talking, we were just trading travel stories for like an hour after our call, which was fantastic. Um, because we've both been like privileged enough to be able to explore a lot of the world. Mm -hmm. and so I love the networking. I love talking to my contributors. You, you all are looking at this contributor list and like you see, right? Like these stars of the dance world and like they absolutely are, but I'm having these conversations with everybody with like no makeup in their jammies, like with their kid running around in the background. And it's like, like every one of them is a real person. Mm -hmm. Right. And like taking it back to that perfectionism, right. All of them are not perfect people either. Right. right? And they'll be the first people to admit it, which is fantastic, I think. And so like, that's one of my favorite parts is just talking to my contributors, interacting with the community. Um, and then I actually don't mind the admin stuff so much, as long as it's not web, web based, <laughs> like, like do building the website admin. <laughs> But I do most, like most of the bundle I run on my own, I am hoping to expand my team this year, but um, I, had, I have an assistant that works like 10 hours a week with me, um, which during the bundle is like nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure. I don't know how you're managing to sleep this many days. I, I really don't though. <laughs> 
if you've ever seen Home Alone, they made this excellent gif. Like they've looped that part where Joe Pesci like opens the door and like the he's rigged up the like uh-huh. the, the flame to like light Joe Pesci's hat on fire. And they've looped it perfectly. It like perfectly loops. They even have like Yule logs <laughs> of Joe Pesci's head on fire, like during this one part. Um that is me <laughs> during the bundle for like I think like 47 or 48 days I remember when I put the contributor page up and it was like sale starts in 48 days and I was like oh no <laughs> <laughs> I remember that feeling of just oh okay that's a lot of days but now it's like the sale starts in like a day and a half and I'm like oh my god I gotta do all the things so <laughs> and then you found time to come and talk to me so thank of you. course I don't find time to talk to anybody like I said this is my favorite part <laughs> 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 my favorite part <laughs> so business wise do you did you start off with a business plan do you have an updated business plan do you have a like plan of what's going to happen in 10 years 20 years don't shake your head you should have a business plan okay so i'm i <laughs> you're gonna hate me for this i think i think business plans right. are i think like the like general business plans, like outlines of business plans mm-hmm. are great. Right. Um, thought exercises on what you want your life to look like in five or 10 years, you know, basic ways of how your business is going to run all great. I think like detailed business plans are a total waste of time right. <laughs> because like, I can tell you, I had a whole plan for like how this bundle launch was going to go. Yeah. Um, and now mm-hmm. that plan has been lit on fire. The ashes have been sent to the four winds they're all over the world. There's a pandemic. I live in Florida, so it's even worse, <laughs> right? Like, you know, I have a two and a half year old, like, like these detailed plans, they, they're, I think they're a waste of time. I think it's so much better to get started and to jump in and do it. So like getting a general idea of what you want to do and a general idea of the direction you want your business to go. It's always great to have this goal of like what you want your business to be in mind. But I just think that a detailed plan on how to get there isn't going to do you much good unless you're the kind of person who really needs that. Some people really need that to even get started. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I'm all about you do you, Mm -hmm. right? So whatever you need to get there, do it, but don't do it just because someone said you have to have it because like- I think you can have a business without a plan. Or you could have a plan without a business, but it's more, much more important that you just have a business and get on with it. Right. Yeah. Because you learn so much more in the doing, right? The first year I did the bundle, I, I so I've worked in bundles for years, right. even outside of this. Like this is the fourth year for the belly dance bundle, but I've been helping people run bundles since like 2015. Right. So this is like, you know, five or six years mm-hmm. of 2014, 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I've been, I've been, I've worked on other bundles, like outside of the belly dance world. And so I had an idea of like what it would be like, you know, I knew what a successful bundle looked like and I knew how to run a bundle kind of because I'd helped other people do theirs, but I didn't know if it was going to work. And a lot of the stuff that I did the first year in 2017 didn't work at all. There are things that we did on the marketing side that just like totally flopped because they were just not they didn't translate well into the dance world. And you never know, you never know what's going to actually work or not work. You can try and you can guess and you can talk to people and you can get a really good idea so that you can go into it. But the best thing you can do is do it. Right. And then learn from it. Right. It's not a failure. Like the fact that I had a live party in 2017 that lasted all day and we had all the contributors came on and like we had Q and A's and it was super fun. And the fact that only like 15 people showed up over the course of six hours, right? I could have sat there and been like, well, that was a huge failure. I'm a terrible human and I don't deserve to be running a business. Right. But I didn't, I went, oh, that dance day didn't work at all. How do I change this? Mm -hmm. And now we have a 21 day Instagram challenge instead. (laughs) Which works. Which Which works. And people are loving and lots of people are joining in. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you take, like, just do it and see what did and didn't work and then start tweaking, tweaking what you're doing about it, Mm -hmm. tweaking how you're presenting it, tweaking how you're, you know, the plan behind it, the overarching plan. And that'll get you so much farther than trying to like create the perfect launch or the perfect product or the perfect plan because it just doesn't exist. Like it doesn't exist. People will surprise you every time. (laughs) People are unpredictable. (laughs) 
I also think there's a level of stress about going off plan. If you're so into your plan that you mm -hmm. get upset when you get away from your plan, then maybe you shouldn't have had a plan. If you are okay with the bumps, then having a plan and changing it on the hop, but it's never going to go the way you hoped on the it would. Hop. Hop. Do you like that? Is that a very English expression? I've never heard that one before. That's amazing. <laughs> I got Once in England, I've never heard that one. Um, that's excellent. Yeah, but I think you can't run a business without the bumps. There's, it's not possible, yeah. right? Like, look at the giant bump that we're going through right now of the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? How many people were like, oh, I don't need to be on the internet only to be proven unbelievably wrong when this happened, right. right? And it's like, you have to be able to adapt and you have to be able to be like, oh crap, what do I do next? How do I, right? That, I, uh, I did an interview the other day where we were talking about the word pivot being the word of 2020. Right. You have to be able to pivot your business to fit your customer base, right? Because we're centering our customers. Because if you were okay showing up to teach class in the middle of a pandemic, that's well and good but it doesn't matter if your students aren't into it. If their students aren't of the same mindset to like come and show up no matter what's going on. Mm -hmm. And right, you have to center them in it and doing that and just the foibles of tech gremlins and you know, your own mental gremlins. Like what if you get depressed and you can't function in your business the way that you were functioning before? Like you've got to change the plan and go into like, life support mode. I've had to do that more than once mm -hmm. um, with my job. Um, you know, if you have a kid, everything changes. So you have to be able to like take these bumps and actually like mm -hmm. move around them. So if that means if you're the kind of person who has to have the plan, when the bump happens, you sit down, you have an hour of silence and you make a new plan and then you go that way. Cool. For me, that doesn't work at all. Like for me, it's like the bump happens and I'm like, okay, what are we doing next? And then I just like dive in a different direction, mm -hmm. <laughs> like diving out of the way of like the bullets coming at me, <laughs> matrix style. <laughs> that's me. That's what I like to okay, do. <laughs> that's the business advice. Watch matrix do that. Yes. Yeah. I'm going with it. Thank you. I love it. I love it. It comes with actions as well. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not a, I'm type A, but I'm not a planner. Interesting. Yeah. Well, hey, but it's working for you, which is, you know, there is, matters. there's no right way, is there? No. Nope. Okay, I'm going to reassess my questions because we've gone all over the place. We talked about the concept. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you was how do you find the balance between inviting back the same I want to say same old teachers and how do you find new my returning contributors and the yeah, new that's it. returning is better than yes. old. <laughs> um, that is probably the hardest part for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I try to base it on, like, I know some of my contributors from last year stopped teaching online in between. So like that was easy. Um, and I try to, uh, it depends on what people are putting out. Like if they are the type of contributor who puts content out on the regular, then they've got something else to offer the bundle. Like they have, a, they have something they want to come in and teach. Yes. And sometimes um, they'll create things for the bundle if they haven't necessarily made anything new in the past year um, that they want to put in the bundle. Like they'll make something new for the bundle. So I try to invite a lot of people back um, because the bundle is one of those things like the more years you participate in it, the better, the better you get at the bundle. Like right. and at, at what you get from it from a contributor side. Um, it grows every year and I've seen it like there are several contributors I could literally point to and be like look at their marketing between 2018 and 2020 and be like you can't tell me they didn't get better at this mm -hmm. in between you know and like their payouts reflect it their student retention reflects it like you can really see people understand what the bundle brings to them on the contributor side um, so I love to have people come back because of that, because it, it just works so much better. Um, and so what I used to do was that there would only be a couple or, of new people teaching online, <laughs> right? So I'd be like, who's like the new hot shit? And I would go out and look for new people who were teaching online and I'd invite them in and we would talk about it. And I, I would always try to get dancers who weren't online to come and teach workshops online for us. Um, but they didn't see the point. I had a lot of people who were like, this is great, but like, it doesn't matter to me. And I was just like, okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, whatever, you know, be friends, make friends, do that kind of thing instead. Um, but 2020, 
uh, was kind of madness. And it's actually one of the reasons that this year there uh, are two bundles. Right. Because I didn't want to, I wanted to bring in a lot of the new people, mm -hmm. but everyone is still kind of finding their feet, you know? So like not everybody has like the polish level of people who have been online for years. Right. And to me, the bundle is a polished product. It's not like, Here's someone with crappy audio, right. like mm -hmm. hanging out in a closet, teaching a class. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to still bring in these amazing dancers who have just started online or, I mean, you know, even like superstar dancers who have just started teaching online yep. um, and then bring back contributors who have been on, like, you know, these are the people who saw the future and, and like came in. Um, and like they have the super polished, you know, everybody's on Teachable and they've got the courses laid out and like their audio is really good. And so you get a good mix of, of both. And to do that, I realized it would be too much if the only way to get it was to get everything. Right. So I wanted to give people options to, you know, just do the lectures, just do the dance. Um, if that fit their mental state a little bit better. And then that way it was easier to justify upping the number of contributors in the way that I have because there's like 17 more contributors or something <laughs> this year than there were last year. <laughs> so I don't really have a good answer for that question, but I I just kind of mix it up. And I have a whole bunch of other projects in the works now for 2021 um, so that the bundle isn't the only way you're going to be able to interact with people. Right. Um, and I think that that will help for bundle time because then like we can start to mix it up a little bit more and get some of the newer people in on other projects, get returning contributors to move to other projects so that the bundle is easier to kind of navigate in that way. Mm -hmm. um, but you're still hearing from these amazing people who you've grown to love through bundle space. Yay. <laughs> so I am going to find the links for the bundle website and for the yes. Instagram and for the podcast and that kind yes. of thing, which means you have like two minutes while I mm -hmm. do that for an elevator pitch. So why should people buy the bundle in your elevator pitch, ready, steady, go? Goodness. Okay. <laughs> I think that you should buy the bundle because you love learning. No, is, is that it? That's your, <laughs> that's my elevator pitch. Yes. You, you love to learn. You love to learn this dance. You're an eternal student. Yes. And with the belly dance bundle, it is the perfect way to do that. It's great for your pocketbook. It's great for your experimentation. It's good for your mental health because we're just going to jump in and have fun together. Um, we're going to have accountability buddies if you want them so you can make some new friends yep. um, through the bundle as well. So there's nothing else that you can go and do at this price point that's going to get you the same level and quality and amount of content. So if you love learning, this is 100% the place for you to hang out. I love it. It was so good. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for finding some time this close to the bundle to spend an hour with me. This is so excellent. Fun. I love it. I'll always find time for you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much. We just hang out and chat when, when we're bored, if we're ever bored. <laughs> and thank you so much for having the Belly Dots Business Academy back again this year. No, we love you. I know you love us. And I do. Great to be able to contribute um, to the bundle and to get people thinking on the business side as well as the dancing and lectures and everything else. So thank you. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk again soon. <laughs> yes, I hope so. Everybody, thank you so much. Awesome.